All right, this is being recorded. One thing I say at the beginning of every single webinar, and I can't emphasize it enough, is watch this again, especially if you're new to options, even if you're new to the way that I teach, because I have specific rules in and around every single option strategy uh, that we need to follow in order to increase our probabilities of success. Uh, every Everyone has their probabilities, but I have ways that uh, throughout my years learned to take advantage of, and I try and teach those in these webinars. So yeah, you can Google this strategy to figure it out, kind of. <laughs> They're not gonna tell you strike location and uh, what type of environment and things of that nature that you're gonna need to know. All right, let me get a couple things out of the way real quick before we get going. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you guys may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal for my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical market analysis. I started out trading in college with some money I had earned, and um, after graduating, I moved to Chicago and started trading on the floor of the Board of Trade. And I, in that time, I've traded everything from stocks, financial futures, commodity futures, currencies, options, and on all of these products and just about all market conditions. Uh, go over this real quick. Any opinions, news, research, and analysis, or other information or material provided by Pro Trader Strategies and or associated companies or employees is for general commentary. It does not constitute investment advice, okay? I'm gonna be even talking about stocks that I have in my portfolio. I'm not necessarily trying to get you, or I'm not at all trying to get you to limbing off the cliff with me. The fact of the matter is uh, I have open positions and we may talk about those throughout this. So, uh, bottom line is we're here to teach you guys these different strategies. It's up to you to implement it in your portfolios in your own way. And please remember that past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, you can also follow us on Twitter. I'm gonna sneeze here in a minute, so you guys are gonna have to, I'm trying to hold it off. You can follow us on Twitter at Wolfman's blog, or you can follow our parent company at ProTraderStrat. Okay, this is the short straddle with no downside risk. Last week we did the short straddle with no upside risk. It's very similar. Uh, the puts, <coughs> excuse me, sorry guys. Uh, the puts um, are gonna be very similar, but the fact of the matter is with the puts, we're gonna be able to go a little further or not go, sorry, we're not gonna be able to go as far away as we were on the calls because the puts carry usually a little bit more premium than the calls. It's a little bit skewed to the put side, okay? Um, all right, with this option strategy, it's the short straddle with no downside risk. Our assumption is market neutral, just like with the straddle. But, you know, the, when I have the bearish in there, that means we're worried about that side. We're not worried about the upside, okay, but, we believe this market's going to trend sideways, but we are worried about it rolling over to the downside. So that's why it's mark, the assumption is market neutral to bearish because of uh, the fine risk on the put side and um, you know with all the deltas and everything else. But the fact of the matter is we do not want to be bullish with this strategy at all. All right, so we're gonna be selling the out the money call and the out the money put and then simply buying an out of the money put. Now, this is what you're gonna find on Google, right? You go out of Google, how do I do a straddle with no downside risk? Or even, I don't even know if they put it out there like this, but they're gonna be like, hey, yeah, you just kind of do this and you're on your way, figure it out. I'm gonna give you all of these keys to success of this strategy right here. So follow along with this. All my rules, these are the, steps we go through for each individual strategy and make sure we are in line with the rules. Picking the right environment. With this one, we need high implied volatility. The reason why we want high implied volatility around this straddle is because the expectation is when volatility is extremely high, and uh, we'll just use this as an example for uh, purposes of implied volatility. When implied volatility starts getting really high, that's when we want to sell premium because the expectation is that or the volatility is gonna come out, that will make those premiums deflate quicker, okay? So one of the ways to increase our probabilities of success when we're selling strategies is making sure that implied volatility when we're selling premium 
is really high. Now, it doesn't mean that when it's really high, it can't go any higher. It can, but when it gets too extended, it has a tendency to want to come back down. You can see it here. It wants to come back down here. It wanted to come back down, right? We're starting to see implied volatility start to move up as people are uh, getting a little bit worried about the upside in Apple. It's not quite to the levels I'd like to see for premium selling, but it's getting very close. All right. So my rule for picking the right environment in this strategy is anything that has an implied volatility percent above 50. That means when implied volatility is in the upper half of the range, which it's not in the upper half of the range yet. Uh, the simple math to figure this out, you have a numerator and a denominator, and we take the sums of each and divide them by each other. So the sum in the top, we take where the current implied volatility of Apple is right now, which is 23. 23 minus the low in the numerator, 23 minus 13 is 10 in the numerator. So, right, the sum of 23 minus 10, the, where it currently is minus the low in the numerator is 10. And divide that by the high minus the low, which is 30, uh, let's call it 36 minus that 13. So we have 10 divided by 20-ish. Uh, so it's close when we're doing the math that way. 43 is the exact number if we did the math exactly right, but I'm rounding everything off. So uh, 13, uh, or sorry, 10 divided by, sorry, it was 10 divided by, uh, 23. So that's what brings it just slightly below that 50 to around 43%. So right now this is in the 43 percentile of where it's been. Okay. 40, it, it ranks around 43, right? We want it above 50. So anything for this strategy, obviously Apple wouldn't fit it. Picking the right environment, we want high implied volatility above 50. Picking the right underlying. Now with the right underlying, what I talk about here is when we're looking at the option montage, which is anything right here, we can go in to the month that has the closest expiration and look at the bid offers here, see how tight they are. My rule here though is on a stock over $100, move the decimal three ticks to the left, 22 cents, you could call it 23 cents is how wide the bid to the offer should be no more than that. Anything less is great, okay? Tighter the better is really what we're looking for when we're trying to pick the right underlying. Now a stock under $100, any stock under $100, my rule of thumb is 10 cents wide. You know, if you get way down here, it needs to probably be about a nickel. But um, let's look at Philip Morris. It's under $100 stock, so my rule of thumb is 10 cents wide. And as you can see, Philip Morris fits that rule. Now, why is that important? What creates those tighter markets? Well, the what creates those tighter markets is the, uh, sorry, I have a dog snoring in the background. Uh, what creates these tight markets is the volume and open interest. Is there a lot of volume and open interest in this one? Yes, there is. There's quite a few. Every Almost every stock has open interest. What does that mean? When there's a lot of open interest, that means there's a lot of eyeballs on this market. And when there's a lot of eyeballs, it means that if I bid, you know, 104 for this, somebody might come in at 105 and tighten that market up because they want to get filled as bad as I do. You know, we're willing to make free market price discovery work in our favor. When it's really wide, uh, you know, say it's a hundred dollar stock and it's 40 cents wide. Well, think about it. There's only maybe one or two people in there looking at that underlying at any given time. They've made some markets, maybe they moved on. But if you come in and better it by a nickel, they might not move their bid at all. You might have to give up 25, 30 cents to get in. And when you give up like 25 to 30 cents to get into this strategy, you're probably gonna have to give that 25 to 30 cents to get out of that strategy because there's only one player in the market. So you can see how giving up all that edge would uh, eat into your profitability because if I gave up a 30 cents edge on say a $70 stock, that 30 cents edge, if we just look at theta, it's only decaying three cents a day. So that means I'm gonna have to wait 10, 10 days just to get back to break even. So if you are a newer trader, especially 
especially if you're a newer trader, stick to that rule. I stick to this rule still to this day, 25 years later after trading, okay? I want the tight markets because I know there's a lot of eyeballs. I don't have to give up much edge. I don't have to figure out the price discovery, all right? It's figured out. It's easy. I can better this by one or two pennies and likely get filled, okay? So tight bid ask. Stock under $100, 10 cents wide. Stock over $100, move the decimal three ticks to the left. That's how wide it should be. Pretty simple. Everybody with me so far? Got some whiz kids in here today. Nobody has a question yet so far. All right, picking the right duration. Now, when, again, when we're selling premium, we're looking for theta decay, right? Because theta decay is what we used to call it on the floor. Theta is the thief in the night that comes and steals your premium, which is when you're selling premium, you want it to erode away quickly. So picking the right duration in here, we're selling the at the money call and the at the money put. So this chart works very well for this. You can see the further out in duration, this is times to, time to expiration. Uh, you can see that this premium decay in your calls and puts is pretty slow. We get inside this 45 days, 35 days even to expiration, and you can see the acceleration in that theta decay. 50% drop in these uh, 27 days, 28 days, okay? That's a fast, precipitous drop. Now, I don't like to go into the last few days on just about any strategy because of gamma and everything else, and that's gonna really affect these at the money calls and puts. Uh, the closer to expiration. So my rule here is get in 45, 35 days to expiration or whatever is closest to that 35 days to expiration. Like right now we're, you know, 20 some odd days out. That's probably what I'm going to pick because otherwise I'd have to be 50 some odd days out. So try and shoot for closest to that 35 days to expiration, whether it's on this side of the line or that side of the line, more you know, if it was 42 days, obviously that would be better, okay? So closest to the 35 days to expiration because we want this fast, rapid theta decay happening to our options, right? So that's what we're gonna be looking for is inside of probably 35 days, just the way that the calendar is set up right now, All right? And picking the right strikes. Well, this seems pretty obvious, right? But I mean, picking the right strikes, Wolfman, you're saying sell the at the monies. Well, it is. Uh, one thing I will say that at the money, this is the at the money's, the eight and a half, 78 and a half. It doesn't fit my rule for the uh, high implied volatility, obviously. But what I want you to take away from here is when you're defining that risk, let's just look at AWZ because it has um, the right implied volatility. So we can sell this and it fits the other rules um, and sell this one. So we have $2.76 collection. Now, picking the right strikes. That was pretty easy. What we want to do is make sure that if we move down $2 from the 31 and a halves to the uh, 39 and a halves, can I still have $2 in premium left over after buying that defined risk? And as you can see, from 39 to or 39 and a half to 31, we still have $2 in credit. So that covers, that credit covers our risk to the downside, you see? And even if it blasted all the way down to 16, we would still get to keep that 18 cents because that is over and above what we uh, had as the distance from our puts to our defined risk puts, okay? Don't go out and uh, say buy these 39s because think about it. I increased my risk by buying this, all right? I, I bought these 29 puts, right? Well, by paying 45 cents, I've increased my risk on the call side by 45 cents. I've lowered my break even on the call side by 45 cents. That's increasing my risk. OK, so there's no reason to increase your risk on one side and still have risk on this other side with a strategy. It doesn't make sense. You guys, if the market blasts down where I'm worried about, then it's going to hurt. All right. So I want to make sure that I cover with this credit the distance of the put spread. Does that make sense for everybody so far?
Yeah. So w- w- exactly. We do not want to have risk to the downside. This creates risk to the downside, Jerry. Okay. So that's picking the right strikes. Really, it's the defined aspect of the downside that we're worried about because it's the strata with no downside risk. This has downside risk. So therefore, we'd need to buy that one in and sell or uh, sell that other one out and buy this one in. That gives us the uh, $2.18. As a matter of fact, I think it locked out when I did that the last time, didn't it? $2 and yeah, it's just way too loud, wide. So I need to go to at least the 39 and a half to get that premium. Okay. All right. How do we get out of this thing? Well, what I usually look for, and this is like a straddle, which is a generally lower probability strategy. We've increased the probabilities of success by defining the risk. We have increased our risk to the upside though, but we have increased our probabilities of success because the downside's eliminated. But because this is an at the money straddle, we get a pretty fat premium. Generally speaking, I talk about taking about 50% of that collection. And in that previous example, we were collecting $2. So 50% of that collection would be a dollar. So when that straddle with the no downside risk is only worth a dollar, that's when I would cover it. Now that's if you have a high risk tolerance. Generally speaking, I'm looking for 30% on a straddle. If you have high uh, risk tolerance, you can go to the 50%. But uh, if you're a newer trader, especially with this strategy and and you know what straddles are like and how long it takes those straddles to kind of decay, that's why I'm willing to take only about 30% of that strategy. And uh, 30% of that strategy would be about 60 cents. So when the underlying is trade or when my strategy is trading around $1.40, that's when I would look to cover that, okay? So I'll just pull this back up real quick. So with this strategy, we are looking at $2 wide if this decayed and was only worth about a dollar, that's when I would ultimately, no matter what, look to cover this strategy. Uh, the other aspect of it is if you're looking 30 to 50% of the collection, that's what we want to keep. 30% of this would right be around 65 cents, right? 60, almost 70 cents really with the extra tail there. So 66 cents. So when this underlying is trading $2.34, that's what I'm looking to cover, okay? You know, that's ballparking everything in my head, which is what I do a lot, sorry. If that confuses anybody that I do all that math in my head. All right, so, uh, Couple of things to talk about here. Max profit is always the credit we received when we're selling premium. So this case, our max profit could only be that $2.18 in the previous example. I am, again, only looking to take about 30 to 50% of that max profit and run away. That increases your probabilities of success, you guys. So keep that in mind that when you're doing this, and covering it, doing it, following all my rules with high implied volatility, you know, really good environment with uh, the right duration, and you are defining the risk, all of those things coming together, covering it early increases your probabilities of success, right? Because the probabilities are based on expiration, and we're getting out early, earlier than expiration, and if we're doing it when we're at a profit, we've increased our probabilities. Max loss is infinite to the upside. If this un- underlying keeps trading higher, max loss is infinite. My exit on a loss is going to be that two times the credit received, okay? So I look at two times the credit received or 50% of that max profit. Um, when we're talking probabilities, I'm going to be able to do this uh, about seven times and lose on three. So the seven times is going to make up for the loss if uh, I were to go that far. All right, our break even. We don't have a break even to the downside because we are building this strategy so that there is no downside risk. All right, so we don't have a break even to worry about to the downside, but our short call plus the credit received is our break even to the upside. So 
in that uh, previous example where we were looking at uh, EWZ, you could see that $2.19 to the upside is our break even. So when this underlying is trading uh, 33 69 then that's where our break even is to the upside okay again no break even to the downside because that two dollars covers this distance on the puts does that make sense for everybody all right so let's just take a look at this on the uh we'll look at it on the analyze tab real quick i'm gonna have to adjust i guess all of these at the same time um or at different times i should say all right so on the analyze tab we can look at this and see that uh you can see i have those puts in there downside no risk this is profitability if it goes to the downside but you can see that our break even to the upside is going to be right there at around uh 33 what did i say 33.70 that's because it's upticked a little bit so 33.70 that's the two dollars and 20 cents plus the 31 50 that's 3370 so that's our break even to the upside now one thing to know why we do this in high implied volatility watch this purple line if volatility increases on us during this strategy you can see that volatility increasing starts hurting us because it's harder to get above this break even line anytime the purple line starts dipping down that means you are not able to achieve what you expected as fast. So as volatility goes up, you can see this line's going down. That means it's hurting us. The premiums are getting pumped up. But if we entered this in a high implied volatility environment, you can see that the purple line is moving to the right. So even if the time didn't change, uh, the underlying didn't move from 3170 this whole time that when we get the volatility coming out of this you can see that purple line moving and the the break this this line moving as well all of that indicates that we are becoming profitable faster right that would be decaying of those premiums quicker okay that's what we're looking for uh yes manu no downside risk because we bought the put what we're looking to here do is when we set up this strategy, I'm just looking at the at the monies, sell that one, sell that one, right? Now I've got $2.76. I'm thinking $2 is probably where, you know, in my head, just dealing with options. It may take you guys one or two more steps here, but uh, I'm looking at $2.76. $2 away from this premium should be pretty close. So I went down $2 to the 79 and a half, buy that one for 59 cents. I had 79 cents to play with, right? 76 cents to play with here. So I know that if I go $2 down, I can look at this one, all right? That's easy enough. If I go down another 50 cents, it's not going to work, okay? Because that extra 50 cents, I don't only come in another 10 cents. So I know it's not gonna work if we buy that. Oh, wait. No. So, yeah, two dollars and thirty nine cents. Right. Is not going to cover that distance. So I need to not do that one and buy the seventy nine and a half. So that gives me from thirty one to seventy nine and a half two dollars. I got an extra twenty cents to boot to the downside if the underlying continues uh, south on me. Right. Does that makes sense. These things go much faster when you guys aren't participating. All right, this is, you guys start throwing stocks out uh, in the questions window. I will start running through and betting those uh, through my rules. We'll just throw out a stock. We have a neutral assumption in it, and we are looking to put this strategy on around it. All right. You said the 79 versus the 29. Sorry, Glenn. I meant the 29 and a half. Sorry. Uh, the... I probably had this number stuck in my head, the 76 cents. I have $2.76, probably two seventy-six cents to play with. Um, you know, I could go a little bit tighter on these 30s and and do that one. That's easy. I, I get to keep, um, you know, a little more than what I would have in the first one. I'd be able to keep about 56 cents here. But I like to get it a little bit wider because that also decreases my break even to the upside. So that's why I like to try and get 
as far away as I can on this defined aspect, okay? And this, that being said, this $2 covers me from the 31 and a halves to the 29 and a halves. All right, so MU, oops. Uh, micron technology is what we're looking at here. So uh, micron, one thing we can look at, let me delete this, get rid of that here. So this is the closest monthlies, right? It's a $50 stock, closest monthlies. We need to look for if it's a good stock. My rule of thumb is it should be 10 cents wide to bid ask. Micron Technologies fits that rule, okay? That works. One thing we can cheat on with Thinkorswim is go straight down here. Current implied volatility percent is 50. That works for this. I'm not sure why Micron Technology isn't over here on my watch list. Um, all right, now it is. So Micron Technology in the 50 percentile, MU 49 point. That's close enough for government work for me, 49.56. Uh, we'll go with it. We also really don't want to have earnings in the month that we're selling. So make sure that that is not the case. This doesn't ever show it. Let me just make sure uh, MU doesn't have earnings right around the corner. That earnings does land inside of this uh, month, this monthly that we're looking to sell. So I would be a little cautious about that um, and probably not do it, although it fits all the other rules. I would wait for this earnings if I wanted to play that uh, for an earnings trade. Um, but if we assume that there was no earnings, we, which we can, we can assume there's no earnings right now. Um, we could sell the straddle. Give me a second here. So sell the straddle that's closest to the at the monies for the most part, especially if I have a, if I'm worried about the downside, I'm going to kind of cheat towards that. So I've got $5 and 17 cents. I probably can't go $5 away and still get, uh, to keep that 17 cents. So uh, we can try it. It's, actually, we can't because there's half strikes. Um, all right, let's half strikes. Let's just go uh, four and a half dollars to the downside, which would put us at around $48, 88 cents. That's not going to make it It's because it's $4 and 50 cents. So I would probably have to go a little higher and do this one and that covers the distance, $3.50. I'd get to keep the 56 cents if the underlying went to the downside, okay? But I've defined my risk. So we're gonna, you have to play around with this a little bit. Make sure you're double checking yourself to make sure there's no downside risk here. And with uh, Micron technology, that would work, all right? Would this strategy work for SPX? Absolutely. Now, when I was talking about uh, high IV percent, all right? Implied volatility percent. That was for stocks, 50, above 50 for stocks. I forgot to mention that for ETFs or indexes like the SPX that Doug's asking about, that high implied volatility would be anything above 30. So for instance, EWZ is above 30, it's at 100%. That would be a good candidate. USO is also another one that would work. GDX uh, works. SPX, I don't believe is that high because I just bought puts an S. Uh, SPY today, um, SPX. Uh, let's see here what SPX says for its implied volatility percent 14. So it's a little low. I'd probably go a little higher because if this underlying goes down, you know, and we're worried about that, we're going to see volatility increase and that's going to hurt us. So I would walk away from SPX and look at a uh, premium buying strategy for something like that and maybe do it small. All right. Um, apart from high IV, is there any type of chart pattern or technical analysis you use to enter a trade? It seems you want to find a stock that is moving sideways or down. James, great question. Yes, I do a lot. Um, and I talk about these in daily market commentaries more than I do in the uh, in the webinars and stuff like that because I don't want to get too uh, in the weeds. But absolutely, as you can see, every one of my chart has the market profile on it. That's one of the things that uh, I can cancel that. That's one of the things that I play around with here. Um, 
is when it gets a little overextended to one side or the other. Uh, I also use the Fibonacci's and stuff like that. So absolutely, I do uh, use those in and around these strategies. I just don't talk about it so much with this because I don't want to confuse everybody. I don't understand. Uh, you are figuring when you're covering the downside risk without the risk graph. Well, I don't need the risk graph because um, let's look at uh, Tesla. I have a position in basically all of these high implied volatility ones, guys. So don't be alarmed that these are the ones that we're talking about. They have high implied volatility. Um, all right. So for instance, this is a $300 stock. Let's just go through the steps again. $300 stock, move it three ticks to the left, 30 cents wide. Should it be out wide? My bid to offer are Tesla, generally speaking, fits that rule to a T. It's pretty darn close. So that works. High implied volatility percent. We can see that works. Okay. So we've got the right underlying. We've got the right uh, stock, no earnings in here. Now let's look at this. This brings back to what Glenn was talking about. Am I looking at this for this type of tr strategy? Absolutely. Now I am bearish in Tesla. All right. It's no, no secret. If you follow me on Twitter or daily market commentaries. All right. But it's found support on this 38 Fibonacci, right? This is a Fibonacci extension, by the way, uh, found support here on the value area low popped above the Fibonacci. It's right there at the point of control where the most time and volume has been spent. So my whole theory in and around this, we found support on this Fibonacci. Market profile, we are right there at the point of control. Now, if you know market profile theory, when it gets to the point of control, it has a tendency to settle down because when you aren't making money and you aren't losing money, you're pretty happy, right? Uh, you don't feel like you need to get out of the trade when you're not making money and you're not losing money. And that's what happens with market profile. It shows us where people have put the time and volume in and around this underlying. That's where price has been discovered and accepted. All of those things it, it equates to value where people perceive value. And if people perceive value right here, well, then everybody becomes complacent. Volatility comes out and the market settles down. That would be my argument for Tesla. And those are the things I walk through in, in, in the daily market commentaries, not so much here, but you know, I talk about how I got these setups. So for me, Tesla would fit all those, right? I'm worried about downside in Tesla. So I'd go into Tesla nearest expiration, uh, or that 35 days to expiration. I'm going to go with this one because I don't want to be in it very long. And, uh, sell the 300 strike, okay? One could argue that uh, actually the two and a halves are probably, we had a big rally at the end of the day, it looks like in Tesla. So let's go with the two and a halves. Um, you can go with the 30 or the 300s. I, I might even lean towards that because I'm more bearish, but just to make it real. Uh, so we sell that one, sell that one. We didn't sell anything. Sell the two and a half, sell the two and a half. So I've got, $28.50 to burn, all right? I would probably look at, because it's a high price stock, $20 to the downside. Now, you know, I can ballpark it probably a little bit better uh, because I've done this so many times that I kind of have an idea as to what the premiums are. But $20 to the downside where I would start with this one. So $20 to the downside would get me to around 75 as it was close as I'm going to probably be able to get. And that's $5. So we can see less than $20. Of the downside is $5. So I'm good there, right? It's only uh, $17 to the downside. So I've got $5 to spare. One could probably stretch it out just a little bit and see if we can get down there to the uh, 70s and we cannot. That's $30 wide. Did I do that right the first time with this one? Um, that Because that's not... That's $25 to the downside. That doesn't work. That does not work. Is anybody blowing me up saying I messed that up? No, you guys missed that. All right, so I've got $28 to the downside. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to go check $15 to the downside. So 85 uh, is probably the one I'm gonna have to do. So 85, that covers the distance. We got $20. And we've got $17.50 in distance. So that's how we would set this one up. 
Glenn, did I answer your uh, question on the uh, covering the distance for the downside risk without the graph? We just have to add it up. $20. Is this $20? No, it's less than $20. So I have more of a credit than this distance. Therefore, I have no downside risk. Earnings on 920 would probably be out before then anyway. Well, yes, if you're talking about that last one with Micron Technology where it was very last day, think about it though. Volatility is going to increase as we head in closer to that unemployment or un, uh, unemployment as we head closer to that earnings uh, result, right? And the closer we get there as volatility increases, we could be directionally right, meaning that market neutral is it's just trading sideways. But with that volatility increasing, that volatility is going to increase the premiums and not allow us to exit the strategy uh, in a timely fashion. Right? You're likely not to see that volatility come out as you're in the month with an earnings. OK, it's going to continue to go up and won't come out likely until after that earnings. Right. So that's why I would stay away from this strategy this far in advance of an earnings event. Does that make sense? So the $20 represents what? A multiple of basically $2 difference between the short and the long put. Well, this $20 I get to keep. Right. So I've got $20 credit. That means to the upside, that $20 credit covers me all the way to three 22, right? Three, actually, yeah, 323 actually with the extra 50 cents. So you add $20.53 into the 302.50, right? That gives us $323.03. That's our break even to the upside. Now, if you want to figure your break even to the downside, add that 20 cents into this and or subtract the 20 cents from this, and that gives us uh, one. 82, 182. So the underlying goes to 182. That's our break even to the downside. Well, we've defined it at 385. So there's no risk past 385. So our break even at 382 doesn't mean anything, right? That makes sense? How that worked out? Uh, JD was, was thinking about it. Yeah, I know. I do that too. All right. Good enough. Um, does that make sense for you guys? All right. Let's look at something else. Um, GLD. I, I just punched that one up. We know we don't have to worry about earnings with GLD. I don't think I have any positions in GLD. I actually may. Uh, maybe not in this account. Um. All right, so GLD, 33, that's above an IV of 30 for an ETF. So we're going to sell the 113s, sell the 113s, or 130, sorry, 113 and a half, because that's the closest to the at the monies. So I've got $2 to play with. First thing I'm going to look at is probably uh $2 to the downside, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it, but if we subtract $2 from the downside, we get one eleven and a half, and I can see already, I only have $22 to spend, and uh, 11 and a halves are going to make me pay 30 So I know that that's not going to do it for me. I'm going to move it up just a little bit more, and you can see, lo and behold, I'm able to, it's only $1.50 difference. I'm collecting $1.75, therefore, I have an extra $0.25. Cents. Okay, so that's how we do that. Another one I saw was Hog, and I will tell you I don't have Hog over on my uh, Harley Davidson on my um, watch list because usually Harley Davidson gets pretty wide. Um, so it's a under a hundred dollar stock. It is ten cents wide, slightly less on most cases. Um, so that works. Do we have high implied volatility? Uh, IV percent is 16, so it's really low. Therefore, I would expect implied volatility to expand. All right, not, not necessarily go down. Hog is a tariff play. Yeah, it is. I agree with that. I agree with it being a tariff play, but there was probably uh, a different strategy I would look for for this underlying if I was 
market neutral or bearish. I wouldn't necessarily do this one. There's not enough implied volatility in here. Okay. So I would walk away from it. So let's go back to that. Uh, let's go back to another one. Uh, we can look at emerging markets. Uh, that's got a 36 IV percent. So as you can see, this is why I'm talking about. Yes, it can spike and it does get pretty high sometimes when there's major movement in the market. But as you can see, it does want to stay well below that 50 percent or even that, you know, where we currently are right now. All right. That 30 percent. You can see most of the time it's spent below there. So I'm good with that, believing that it's going to want to come out um, or likely to come out. So I'm going to go to the closest day at the money again. The two and a halves, I'm going to go slightly a little bit lower um, because I am slightly bearish. So a dollar sixty six. I don't think I'm going to be able to go a dollar fifty and pay sixteen cents, but let's just check. So a dollar fifty to the downside would put me at forty one. And wait, uh, sorry, dollar. Yeah, let's see, a dollar fifty to the downside and paying twenty six cents. So I'd only be able to go a dollar to the downside. So a dollar to the downside. Dollar wide spread, I get to keep a dollar thirty eight uh, or dollar thirty three. Sorry, so thirty three cents. If this goes to zero, I get to keep, and if it stays right here, then I'm looking to get out at somewhere around sixty five cents. Okay, Does that makes sense so far. Anybody else have any other things that you guys want me to go over real quick before I? I move on. Anybody else? Bueller? Bueller? All right. Clearly, you guys paid attention to last week's webinar, and that's why there's no questions, or at least not very many. Plus, it's a pretty simple strategy to set up. You know, I have this as an advanced option strategy. The reason why is because we're selling premium. We're selling a strategy or a selling a straddle, which, it, you know, is a tough one to uh, to get to our max profit because it's right there at the money. Uh, and um, we have we have some risk we have to worry about. So that's why it's more of an advanced option strategy. Relatively easy to figure out once you've learned all the rules. And that's what I try to do in every one of my webinars, you guys, is teach you these rules so that you can go step by step and realize whether or not that strategy is appropriate for the environment, that underlying and everything else. Kind of like what we talked about with, uh, um, you know, uh, Harley Davidson being a little too low implied volatility. I'd move on to a different strategy if I had that market assumption and I was looking to do something with that. So is it, is it a theta decay play? Uh, yes, it is a theta decay play and a volatility play. Anytime we're selling premium, it's really a volatility. We're selling premium and we're selling volatility. Okay. When we're selling volatility because we expect volatility to go down and volatility goes down. Then we uh, can get to our profit target quicker. Okay. So one, it, it is a theta decay play. Yes, because of the duration, but it's also a vol play as well, because we are only going to sell premium in high implied volatility environments. And for an ETF above 30, a stock above 50, that's what we're looking for here, right? Because if we have less premium in here, we can even look at this, go to theoretical market. All right. So let me reset all this. Let's reset it. So the date is today. Nothing happens to the date. Nothing happens to the price. We're not going to adjust that. But what happens to the volatility if it goes down? Watch these premiums. If, if we entered this in a low implied volatility, you can see that if volatility was less than where we are now, what kind of premium we would be able to collect for these underlines. And that's not very much of a collection in premium, right? We're not getting a whole lot out of that. And if we're not getting a whole lot out or getting a whole lot of premium, that means we would have more risk to the upside and to the downside. Yes, volatility does kind of pump up when there, it, there's fear in the market and there's uh, expectation of a bigger move. But that's when we need to take advantage of it because usually volatility is overstated. All right. 
When people are fearful, they overstate volatility. Same thing when we get complacent, we are too complacent. You know, when the volatility is super low, we are too complacent. Nobody's worried about anything. And the I, that's when you should be worried about it. You know, I tweeted out today, everybody is so bullish on Apple right now. I think I have to get short deltas, which is why I ended up buying puts in Apple today. Uh, just because everybody else is wildly bullish, volatility is really low. It's at a really, it's at all time high. I mean, there's all kinds of things go saying to me that people want to cover. So we want to get into an environment where volatility goes down. So we see this premium happen quickly with no adjustment in date, no theta decay, no price adjustment, nothing happened, but volatility coming out. That's what we want to see happen when we sell this strategy, the volatility coming out. Therefore, our premiums do that rather than our premiums looking starting out there and we get the volatility adjustment to the upside and those premiums start going up. Nothing happened. Right. We don't want to see our premiums go up in value because that hurts. Right. If we started out at that 80 some cents, we're already at a dollar. If I got in right now, you can see if volatility adjusted this much while I got into this strategy, then that would hurt. That's why we try and pick the extreme highs, extreme lows and volatility and start putting our strategies in and around that because it, volatility comes out, it comes out quickly because people realize they were over afraid. Does that make sense? All right, good. So that's why we, it's a volatility play as well. Uh, but EM with, tariff will go down and ID up. Yes, it, it could. If the tariffs uh, start coming off with the emerging markets, that could help them. Well, if the tariffs come off, that's going to help the emerging markets, right? So that would be bullish, which would be scary. The tariffs are going to hurt the emerging markets. Then that would be a good, this is a good strategy for that um, to the downside because I have no risk. Is this strategy... Uh, if this strategy starts going against you, is there an adjustment uh, to the to turn it around or just get out? Doug, the, the adjustment would be if your market assumption was still neutral, like in and around these strikes, like that that Tesla strategy uh, that I was looking at was right there at the point of control. If I believed it was still going to be at the point of control, then I would roll it out in time to give myself more premium, increase my break evens. Um, but I would not be adjusting that. It's You could go inverted with these, uh, but that is a very tough row to hoe um, and very advanced. If you go inverted, just make sure that you are collecting enough premium to cover that distance, all right, when you're doing that. Uh, the other thing, I would roll it out in time. The other thing to get out would be if this premium on this underlying increased to $2.60. That's where I'm getting out. Okay. Does that answer your question? All right, good. You guys, how to trade options like the Wolfman. This goes through step by step. If you guys ever wanted to know how to trade gamma, like I talked about inside that seven days, I like to stay away from it when I'm putting on these long duration option strategies. But I do like trading gamma. But there are certain rules in and around that. Using market profile, how to trade options. I talk about that, uh, Glenn. We were talking about using support and resistance in and around, stuff like that. But protecting your portfolio against rising interest rates, I, I know you guys, some of you guys have heard me say this 100 times, but I'm going to say it 100 more. This is paramount that you guys look at this one make sure you start implementing these strategies around your portfolio. Most people have 50% of their portfolio in bonds. And as interest rates go up, that bond, por bond portfolio is going to get crushed. So do you think you guys could become better traders if you traded with higher probabilities of success? I mean, it seems pretty obvious that look at Vegas, they trade with higher, they trade with higher than a 50% probability of success and they're doing pretty well. Uh, you guys really should be trading with this knowledge and the best way to become a better trader is to constantly learn. Obviously, you guys are doing that by attending this webinar, but wouldn't you say that just knowing how to create an option strategy 
or trading around technicals isn't enough to create consistent winners. Basically, what I mean is trading the technicals, building strategies. When you put all that together with how I have the rules, that's the way to increase your probabilities of success and become more mechanical. Uh, and that's the best way to get ahead in this game. I'm even going to be teaching about how to become more mechanical in next week's webinar as well with some of these strategies, how to stay with it. Like uh, Doug was asking when these go against us, how we stay mechanical and start adjusting these trades uh, to increase our probabilities even further in our uh, favor. All right. That's creating alpha. All right. So when you guys are using the right tool, you're in the right situation, you guys are going to be more productive state of mind, put on more strategies that creates more opportunities and ultimately builds confidence. All right. So we guys, we're offering this today uh, for you guys, which I've failed to uh, pull up the link for this. I'm going to give, give me a second because I'm going to have to pull it up, throw it in there. Somebody's already asking about it. Um, we're offering this to you guys today for 36 bucks. I seriously suggest you guys take advantage of it. It is one of the better ones. And for the price that we're giving it to you guys, it is a steal. So let me copy this link and get it into that chat window. We're talking back and forth in the uh, questions box. That's how I've been answering your guys' questions. Right now I'm throwing over there in the chat window to the entire audience, this link. So you can click on that link easily by flipping over there and uh, clicking on that to take advantage of this opportunity. If you're watching this on tape delay, you're just gonna have to pause and punch this into your URL, all right? So if you've learned anything at all from me today, especially if you guys are some of my regulars, make sure you take advantage of this. You need to be trading with this knowledge. So what do you say? Go ahead and click on that link. Uh, I also wanna say thank you for attending this webinar and later webinars, I'll be drilling down on different option components, how I trade options and trades I find when and where I find them appropriate uh, for me. And if you want to put those trades in your own account, then that's up to you. Here's also that link that you can pause, might be a little bit easier to see uh, and type that into your URL. I wanna thank you guys again. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us at 310-598-6677 or reach out to us at trading at protraderstrategies.com. All right, uh, let me go back to a couple questions here, but I'll leave it on this. But, you know, over 10 hours of content here, probably closer to 15 hours of content for 36 bucks. And you can go in there and just click off when you watch them, watch them out of order if you want, and, um, and you can keep track of what you're doing. Nice webinar, thanks. Thanks, Kumar, appreciate it. Uh, Doug, I think I asked your answer to your question. All right, Glenn, you're good to go. Perfect. All right, click on that link right there in the chat window and you'll get set up right away. And um, that's about it. Other than if you can't take that, take it easy. Take care, guys. You demand, JQ.